Nomad.js wrap. Here we will focus on the workflow when you carry out a simple suitability analysis using rasters. I will not explain tools that have been covered in previous videos. The suitability analysis is based on distances to existing features. The features are land cover type equal to forest, roads and rivers. Our condition for a hypothetical bird called Picus silver stephanos are listed here. On the left side we have a list of distances where we change from one suitability class to another. Here the lower the suitability value the better. For food suitability gets worse with distance to the forest. For disturbance the suitability gets better the further away you are away from the road. It does not get better with distances higher than one kilometer. And for nesting, the suitability is getting better the closer you are to the river. Let's implement these rules in ArcGIS. We have here a polygon file with our land cover layers, coded as we had them before. And because we only need the forests, what I've already done is I selected only those codes that are forest 2, 4 and 5 and created a new layer that is only forest. So here we have a polygon layer with only of our forests. The additional two layers we need are our roads and our rivers. The key analysis that we carry out is distance. Distance is one of those overriding most important variables in geography. And we find a variety of distance tools in the Spatial Analyst Toolbox under Distance. And in our case here we apply the Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance is the shortest distance between two points. And if we click here you can read that it calculates for each raster cell the distance to a source layer. So the source layers will be first forests and then roads and then rivers. Here is the result of my forest distance layer. I have changed the symbology. The default symbology was very useless. And I changed it just right now just to be in 100 meter increments. But if we zoom into any area here to find out, for instance, distances to forests, we can see that any grid cell has a particular forest distance. In our case, the grid cell size is 25 meters. The center from our grid cell to the edge of our polygon file is the distance that is calculated. So these distances are all unique for each grid cell that you have all across our surface. So every location has a distance to forest. We can do the same thing for our rivers and the same thing for our roads. So now we have three raster surfaces, distances to forest, distances to roads, and distances to rivers. And now what we should do is we now reclass those raster files. So in our reclassify command, we translate these distance rasters into the distance rasters that we need for our suitability analysis. And I've done that for our forest distance. Here you see the classes as we had them for our suitability habitat definitions. And I already color coded them, always green being highest suitable and red being lowest suitable. Here is our reclassed surface for our forest. The reclassed surface for our roads. and the reclass surface for our rivers. And for better visibility, let's turn off our forest layer. 
So now that we have all our three distances, we can either add them up or multiply the three raster files that we have just created. Let's look how they look like when we add them up. This is not the pattern that we expect. And the calculations of adding the three raster files were correct. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, our lowest numbers, our highest suitability. And our worst one was 100 plus 100 plus 100 is 300. So this is correct. But this symbology completely fails to tell the story. So we need to change this. Here is an attempt to make it a bit more meaningful. I changed the symbology to very, very small. I highlighted the one, I changed the color three, which is three ones, but then also other contenders that are very close to high suitabilities. Then I just go in increments of one, just to make sure that we not missing any other highly suitable areas. To make this more meaningful, let's turn on the other layers and my forest layer, I want to change the symbology. So that we can see all three layers, the roads, the rivers, and the forests. So this makes more sense, but then of course we can always be attempted to fine tune things and keep our legend simple by in this case only having four classes. Typically in suitability habitat analysis, we want to end up with only four classes, four colors from green to red. And I have chosen these cutoff values under six is everything is great. So three suitability piece of two, then three suitabilities of four, and so on to make my decision. And the result uh, looks meaningful. The dark green areas are all around rivers. They're away from roads and they are close to forests. How do our results look like when we multiply? Here's our multiplication that I have already classed into my four classes to make things easier. A hundred times a hundred times a hundred is a million, and two times two times two is eight. And if we use the multiplication raster, and we symbolize it in very small increments. Where is everything that's perfect? Uh, where is everything that is really small, etc.? And here is a chaotically looking map, but again, uh, it makes sense that the best areas are found near rivers, in forest areas, and away from roads, of course. So which method is the better one? Should you add or should you multiply? Which classification should you use? How many classes? What are the class boundaries? These are all decisions to be made by experts, maybe by yourself, maybe in collaboration with more experienced colleagues, or maybe you dive into the literature and find recommendations there. The key thing is you or someone else must decide on those methods. I'm just showing you how to implement those methods in a GIS. That's all for today. Until next time.